My friend Iris has asked me to talk about the art of the shield. Um, specifically, shielding for hypersensitive folk, empaths, if you will, people who are sensitive to uh, the energies, moods, thoughts, etc., of others that they encounter or places, situations that they encounter in their lives. Um, so, I'll talk about shielding. Um, but I also want to say that there are two sides to shielding here. There is the shielding, as she uh, asks, about hypersensitive people responding to energies that exist in their environment and needing some sort of control over that uh, exchange, okay? Then there is the shielding as armor against attack. Um, so my main focus, at least in the beginning here, is going to be on the shielding for hypersensitivity, learning to control your own boundaries. Um, and, but I will get to the other aspect of shielding. So, now, in Hermetics, we must learn how to be in control of our own energies, you know, of our energetic. Um, control over how we allow uh, the external universe to affect our energies. Okay? And ultimately, control over our energies as our expression to the uh, rest of the universe. What we do with our energy. We need to control both aspects. So the idea of shielding in this instance is really to use it as a tool to get to a place where you have control over how much and in what way you are affected by your environment. Okay? So it's progression. Now we start with the simplest shield there is. It's very effective too. Even though it is so simple, it's very effective. And that is the simple white light. White light. Surround yourself with white light. You want to surround yourself with about a foot of white light, okay? For a foot away from the surface of your body, you want to have white light. About a foot does it. It's a good distance. It sets a barrier, okay? And that's important because you need to have sort of a sensorial feel for your energy body, okay? Now we're talking here about your physical and your astral energies. We're not talking here about mental shielding. We're talking about physical and astral shielding so that your, your physical energy and your emotional energies are under your control, basically. Within this white light, it's you that control what's going on, and any energies coming at you will hit the white light, and the white light is purifying, okay? Um, it renders harmless anything that comes into its field, okay? So, that's the first step. Taking your energy within this white light, and it is impermeable. You know, it, it prevents anything from affecting you, all right? That's what needs to be in your mind. Now, fundamental to any kind of effective shielding 
is your level of belief that it's going to work. Okay? Now, as hermeticists, we don't stick things on just plain belief. You know, someone told me it's going to work, so I believe that it works. It's not that kind of belief. It's a belief that develops as you prove that it does or does not work. Okay? So you need to prove to yourself that this is a valid thing, that it's not just your imagination. So, you want to have this, you know, shield, this mass of white light surrounding you entirely and enter into situations where it's going to be tested. You know, um, we'll do this at times when you feel uh, the presence of an energy that is taking hold of you and changing how you feel. Okay? So when that happens, you want to put up this white light around you. Okay? You can also just be in your day with the white light so that, you know, if anything does come at you, you have this degree of control over the interchange between you and it. Okay? Because that's what this is all about, is this exchange of energy between the external and the internal. Okay? Now you have control over that exchange, but we're going to build up to where that control is not reliant on a shield. It's just a natural function of being in your, your energy. Okay? So, what I suggest is you get a little rock, a little pebble, something like this. Uh, I prefer quartz. Quartz is good to work with shields. And this will remind you of your shield of white light. So have it in your pocket, or even have a little pendant necklace that you can touch. You want it to be something that you can touch. So, when it comes time to have that shield of white light, you touch the pebble that's in your pocket. You fondle it and make that connection between shielding and your pebble, your pendant, your whatever. You need to have it small and on your person so that there is, again, this connection between the two that's established. So, ultimately, you don't have to focus on, you know, creating the white light, which is just a function of the creative imagination. You know, simply you picture a white light around you, um, and it'll be varying degrees of uh, density, if you will, of that white light, and it'll increase over time, it'll change, etc. So, eventually you'll just have to grab hold of your little rock or um, pen or whatever, and suddenly you're surrounded in white light. So, <clears throat> use this. See what difference it makes. You know, you have to really investigate it. You have to be aware uh, of a, what difference it makes, if any. And in that way, convince yourself, hopefully, of its validity and its power and its limitations, okay? Um, <clears throat> one thing that a shield no matter what shield it is, will never protect you from, is a karmic issue. You know, um, so you're going to encounter things in your environment that you have a deep karmic connection with, that you have a, an ancient relationship with, that you know, is the, that presents itself in a circumstance now that you simply cannot ignore it. And, uh, you know, having a shield in those instances is very illuminating. 
because it completely violates your shield. And you know, oh, okay, this is something karmic that I have to deal with, so there's no point trying to shield against it. What then I have to do is face it, you know, head on, um, with, you know, some control over my energy. Okay. So, that's basic number one shielding is the white light shield in which you explore the value of shielding and build your confidence or not in <laughs> the effectiveness of shielding for you. Okay. The next shield um, is what I call the uh, Adonai Light Shield, the TMO, the magic of um, yod heh vav -He Adonai um, Shield. And it's a three-part shield. It's not just an astrophysical shield. It's a, astro, a physio astramental shield. You're covering all three bodies. So it, it <clears throat> protects you um, from things that capture your thinking process, okay? It's not just the emotional or physical energy, it's the things that pervade your thoughts, okay? <clears throat> now, I give a lesson in the TMO videos and audio files in creating the three-part shield. And it consists of generating uh, quantities of Adonai light using TMO um, and wrapping them around you. You first start with your physical body. You wrap the shield around your physical body, very much like the white light shield, except here it's the, the rainbow of lights. It's all these particles of every color imaginable surrounding you, the Adonai light surrounding you, and you program them. Now, this programming is usually along the lines of this physical shield will alert me any time there is incoming energy, no matter what kind of energy, you know, it will let me know that it's coming, and I can then block it or not. I have choice with this shield. It alerts me and I can decide what is going to happen with this energy. Am I going to stop it at the perimeter or am I going to let it in and interact with it? Okay. Um, <clears throat> then we build the astral shield, an entirely different operation. Okay. First we build a physical shield, then we build the astral shield this emotional shield, and we program it, you know, built it out of Adonai light, and we program it with the same sort of programming, that it is going to let me know when something wants to grab me by the emotions and whip me around, and, you know, what I will do with that. Am I going to let that in, or am I not, and to what degree, etc. So it's an early warning kind of shield, um, that gives me control. And then we do a mental shield around our mental being. Um, <clears throat> again, made of Adonai light, and we again program it in a similar way, that it will alert me when anything is coming to manipulate my thinking. You know, and how much, if at all, do I interact with that energy? Okay. And so, <clears throat> in this way, we develop a, a triple shield <clears throat> that work, they all three shields work in conjunction, you know, just like our three bodies. Um, <clears throat> and this becomes a more permanent shield. It's not like the white light shield, which we just raise up when we need it. Um, it's also good to uh, anchor this on an object, have, uh, you know, either one object to represent the three shields working together, or three separate objects for each shield, depending on what we want to work with. 
And what we do is throughout the day, we just mentally uh, reaffirm the existence of this shield. And over time, it builds up and to be stronger and stronger uh, each time we think about it. And we can go back and, you know, re-energize the three parts of the shield with Adonai light anytime we want to. Um, but we it becomes a permanent shield. The Adonai light doesn't deplete. Um, it constantly maintains itself. Okay. The Adonai light, when any energy, uh, be it physical, astral, or mental, interacts with our Adonai light, the Adonai light is such that it can meet that specific energy um, with a corresponding energy because the Adonai light contains all of the colors of energy. Okay. Um, so we meet that on its own grounds. And in that way, we can either dissipate it because we present it with all the colors that will dissipate the energy, or we can let it in and integrate it into our own selves because the Adonai light will meet it in a way that it can grab hold and integrate if we want, okay? Now, <clears throat> the next type of shielding is with the Catholic brilliance. Now, the Catholic brilliance has a whole different level of um, interaction with any incoming energy. When we have the Catholic brilliance around us, how to put it, all other energy bows to the Catholic brilliance. It is the supreme energy. Um, no energy is greater than the Catholic brilliance. No energy can countermand the Catholic brilliance. So all energies come with respect, shall we say. It's really hard to put this into words. Um, <clears throat> the Catholic brilliance is superior. And all energies that come to the Catholic brilliance recognize the superiority of it. It's just an organic uh, response to the Catholic brilliance. So there's an impermeability to the Catholic brilliance. Nothing enters unless we want it to. It's just that simple. Um, and that too, well, this can be either a permanent shielding with Catholic brilliance or uh, a situational shielding with Catholic brilliance. Generally, using it situationally is better than uh, having it to be perpetual. Uh, perpetual surrounding of the Catholic brilliance, it, well, it's demanding, okay? Um, and it, it demands that level of respect from your environment um, at all times, you know, if, if you have the continuous uh, Catholic brilliance. It's like, it's always, there's this tension uh, between you and the, the rest of the universe in that it, it must, you know, sort of bow uh, to, uh, you, to the Catholic brilliance. Um, and that's tiresome. <clears throat> that that feels unnatural uh, in general. So, so that of course requires generating considerable amount of Catherine brilliance. Which, if you've done that already and you know how to do that, or have a radiator, uh, is no problem. Um, 
and it's very much the same. You simply surround yourself with the Catherine brilliance. Uh, okay. But, early on, <coughs> you will hopefully have learned how to be in command or control of your own energy body and how to regulate the interaction with the external environment. How much of a say you have in that interaction? How much are things going to affect you is in your power. It's in your control. And the point here is to learn to establish those boundaries for yourself and have them stick. You know, use shielding like a crutch, you know, until the leg is well enough to bear its own weight. Um, and that's what you want to do with shielding. You don't want to rely on shielding as much as you want to learn from the shielding. Let the shielding enable you more easily to take control over that barrier. Okay, this is mine. You know, that's yours. And, you know, I'll welcome you in or not, depending on my will. Okay? My will. And you have that within your ability to do. And shielding can be a doorway, <clears throat> uh, a pathway into gaining that control. Okay? Because that's what you want, ultimately, is to have, well, it's a whole idea of shielding, is to have control, but you don't need a shield to have that control, is the point, okay? So, <clears throat> now we come to the issue of someone who is being attacked. Very, 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 very seldom is there anything such as an actual magical attack. Now, shielding for uh, actual attack, there is only one shielding that is, I think, valid at all, to actually being magically attacked by another person or group of people, and that's what I call the Akashic Shield. That's where you become completely completely invisible to everything except karma. So, I mean, it, most likely if you are getting attacked by some group, which is incredibly rare, um, it's karmic, you know. You got some deep karma that you need to resolve. But, the way that you can avoid the physical repercussions of the attack um, is with the Akashic Shielding, where you become totally invisible. In this way, you do not participate in the attack. There is no, it's like a mirror shield. Well, I'm just going to bounce all that shit back at you. Well... That's participating in the attack. That's increasing the negativity of the attack. Um, that's participating in warfare. You know, <clears throat> I don't believe in that. I mean, it seems really stupid to me. So I don't ascribe to a mayor shield. <clears throat> we don't need to do that to the rest of the world. You know, what we need to do with that energy is let it just go by, not reach its goal, waste that energy. Essentially, when you have an Akashic shield, someone sends something at you, it doesn't find you. It just keeps on going infinitely, okay? 
until it dissipates uh, because it drains all the energy from the attacker in a non-productive way. That energy is productive only when it hits you and, you know, does something. But if it just misses, you know, just keeps on going, it's, you're disempowering the attack. You're uh, ending uh, that equation, you know? It isn't 2 plus 2 equals 4 anymore, it's just 2 but okay and it ends it now <clears throat> the akashic shielding uh, I don't know if you can do this without familiarity with the akasha but I can give you some of the um, visualizations that you would use. You would picture yourself in an empty, infinite empty space. It all goes in every direction from you infinitely and it's empty, it's dark, it's really dark. It's almost black dark everywhere around you. And you are less than gaseous. Anything that comes at you is going to pass right through you without hitting any part of you. Your awareness is there, but you have absolutely no body. And nothing can touch you. So you can see an attack coming, and it just keeps on going out the other side, completely unscathed. Okay? <clears throat> and that's the, the, the sense, is you're not only invisible, you're untouchable. There's nothing there for anything to touch. <clears throat> now, this shield can be maintained for quite a long time, especially with repeated thought, you know, repeated activation. Um, <clears throat> but it has consequences because you don't necessarily want everything to not be able to find you, to, for no one to be able to find you on an emotional level, you know, especially if you're in a relationship that sort of doesn't work, you know, for that your your partner to not be able to connect with you emotionally because that will be the effect of an Akashic shield. It cuts you off from all energy, all exchange of energies. Um, so, <clears throat> Its effects can be subtle in your day-to-day -day life, but they're still there and will affect your relationships with other people uh, if kept up for any length of time. In general, it, it wouldn't need to be because uh, most attacking forces um, are not going to keep attacking if it doesn't do any good. You know, um, but you, it's easily easily erected and then let go of erected and let go of. So when you feel an attack coming, like if you got um, you know uh, an auto nihilite shield and it's alerting you that something's coming, you can very quickly put up an akashic shield and you know let that attack go through and uh, then drop it and. Uh, be in a nor more no normal uh, state of being. So, <clears throat> but, like I said, attacks are very, very rare. Uh, most often it is, uh, 
exaggerating uh, life's little frustrations, over uh, overemphasizing life's little frustrations or incidents, uh, amplifying them to an extent that they feel like an attack. Um, also, uh, saying I'm being attacked is uh, a psychological tool that we use to avoid taking responsibility for something that we have created, like uh, a, a situation that, you know, we've just totally fucked it up, um, but we can't admit that we have been in the wrong and caused this turmoil. Instead, we, we think, oh, we're under attack, uh, you know, this attack is destroying relationships or whatever, you know, but when it's our own fault. And we need to take responsibility and not ascribe it to an attack and set up a shield and et cetera, et cetera. You know, a shield can give one um, the psychological space, the feeling of a safe space, um, but it's really a safe space from our own selves. <coughs> and we want to avoid uh, doing that, definitely. So, I think it's about all I can say about shielding. I, uh, but I help go back to where we started. Um, the important thing with shielding is to learn the ability to control your own energy yourself, you know, because that's always in your control. Uh, you just have to get your hands on it and uh, control it. It's ultimately that simple. <laughs> okay, that's it. Bye-bye.